In many ways, Dragon Age The Veil Guard feels like a true return to RPG form for Bioware. Traversing the world of Thadis with pals, juggling abilities and stats and levels and skill points, and making questionable choices with narrative repercussions is exactly what I would have wanted out of a new Dragon Age game. And The Veil Guard certainly delivers on all of that and more. It's by no means perfect, and I have my fair share of frustrations with it after roughly 76 hours. But between surprisingly satisfying combat mechanics and lovingly crafted narrative arcs that touch on everything from morality to identity to family, it's hard to fault the game too much over minor quibbles. Even after devoting an obscene amount of hours to Dragon Age The Veil vale Guard over an extremely short period of time, my overwhelming feeling as the credits rolled wasn't relief at being done, so much as curiosity at what I could have possibly done differently. Satisfied, but eager for more, which is the highest possible praise for an RPG like this. Dragon Age The Veil vale Guard's combat completes the series' slow transition over the years from a classic CRPG – think Baldur's Gate with its tactical, almost grid-based battles – into something more akin to Fantasy Mass Effect, an action RPG where you swing swords and cast magic in real time. This is not exactly new news, as Bioware has been moving in this direction ever since Dragon Age Origins got put on the shelf, but it has certainly reached a natural conclusion in Dragon Age The Veil vale Guard. Picking between Warrior, Mage and Rogue at the start affects the cadence of play, and specking into one of three specialisations for each allows you to refine your style further but combat plays out similarly regardless of those choices. It's a mix of quick positioning, weapon attacks, class abilities from you and your two tag long companions, your specific ultimate ability, runes, and a whole lot of ugly enemies that want to bash your head in. You can dodge, you can defend, and you can even make a ranged attack. In my warrior's case, tossing her shield to and fro, hither and yon. There's a lot going on, and early on I frequently struggled to keep track of both the chaos of combat as well as the cold hard math beneath it. In time, Dragon Age The Veil vale Guard's scuffles became second nature. I'd picked up or upgraded enough items that my warrior was dealing a whole mess of bonus fire damage, as well as inflicting burning on enemies with a hefty amount of death also being dealt through shield tosses. Bellara, my elven tinkerer mage, and Harding, the dwarf rogue with her deadly bow, served to lock enemies down through magic or detonations – one ability from one companion causing a debuff, another from a different companion making it explode with much fanfare, while I sliced and diced and generally set everything ablaze. It's not my personally preferred combat zone when it comes to combat mechanics, as I've usually found tactical, turn-based combat more to my liking. I'd typically find myself grumbling alongside all the other curmudgeons about this long-coming, real-time shift, but I have to admit, it does work. Having Nev, my detective mage companion, freeze a whole bunch of enemies along one side while I help detonate a bunch of critters on the other, only to turn around and shatter the frozen baddies that remained was extremely satisfying all the way through to the end. For the fourth game in a mainline fantasy gaming franchise with a unique setting and massive amounts of world building behind it, Dragon Age The Veil vale Guard is about as approachable as it can be for both new players and those that have previously thanked the maker. Appropriate context is given when proper nouns are brought up, going some way to avoid being impenetrable and making it as fine a point of entry as any to dive into but it also answers many questions that long-time players have had over the years, while introducing even more tantalising hints at what might come next. My only hope is that we don't have to wait another 10 years to find out more. The main antagonists of Dragon Age The Veil vale Guard are two would-be tyrants and ancient self-styled elven gods that have been accidentally freed. If you're not familiar with the previously established pantheons and cosmology, knowing that Elganarn and Gilanarn of the Evanorus have been released from their prison in the Fade behind the Veil vale due to Fenherel's ritual being interrupted is just a mush of proper nouns. Instead of relying on that level of knowledge, the game attempts to provide context early on whenever those are dropped, tying together through dialogue. As an example, the concept of Evanorus and ancient elven gods who were basically just powerful mages. That doesn't mean there aren't plenty of callbacks, cameos, references, and so on to everything that's come before. 
For people like me that have played and loved each Dragon Age game as they've been released over the years, there's enough to fill, well, a codex. It's just something either contextualised or presented in a manner that adds depth rather than explicit meaning. For example, if you've never played Dragon Age Inquisition, you might simply think cool music as you wander around Docktown to the dulcet tones of bards and their tunes. But if you have, you might instead be able to pick out the chords of Serra Was Never, if not the lyrics. Without spoiling any particular outcomes, Dragon Age is famous for being a franchise about companions and your relationships with them, as well as meaningful choices followed by consequences. And the Veil Guard very much continues this lineage, with six factions, seven companions, and dozens of hours in total of running about the northern part of Thedas, there are a lot of different ways to get it right, as well as absolutely beef it. Missions come in effectively three types, main story, companion, and a combination of faction and region. That's also roughly the priority of them as main story quests are what might be considered the critical path and everything else is supplementary, though you're likely going to have a bad time in the end if you ignore everything that isn't specifically moving the core plot forward. All of these largely meander through one specific region associated with each faction, Docktown for the Shadow Dragons, Arlathan Forest for the Veil Jumpers, and so on, with a few additional points of interest as well as your base of operations, the Lighthouse, where you can spend time with your pals and collectively plan what to do next. On paper, it might seem like a small amount of space to traverse, but it doesn't feel particularly small while playing, and the ability to dip in and out of areas for different quests as you please means you're often only really stuck in one place for as long as you want to be. This is all very much my bread and butter, narratively and mechanically, and if the constraints of this review weren't so specific about spoilers, I would happily write one twice as long about the hows and the whys and the what it all means at the end of the day. For the most part, it really works. All of it. I even accurately speculated in my notes about a major reveal an entire week before I confirmed it, though there are plenty of other twists and turns I never saw coming. But while I love all of my stupid companions equally, Tash was a romance dark horse for me that came out of nowhere, and you'll understand why if you play. I found the vast majority of choices to be lacking significant teeth. Barring the very end of the game, I struggled with basically only a single choice, and even that one left a sour taste in my mouth despite the significance, due to the fact that it appeared seemingly out of nowhere and ultimately locked me out of some progression by automatically failing a series of quests I hadn't gotten around to quite yet. It's a relatively small gripe for a game the size and scope of Dragon Age The Veil Guard, but one that will likely frustrate many others. Perhaps colouring all of this for me is that one of the earliest events of my career was an E3 2009 hands-on briefing for Dragon Age Origins, where I haphazardly played through the Dalish Elf Origin. There is a kind of beautiful symmetry to be playing Dragon Age the Veil Guard 15 years later, and I can only hope that I've aged as gracefully as a writer as Dragon Age has a franchise. Newer, shiny, and different than it was, but very much featuring the same solid foundation as before. Despite some small caveats, playing through a new Dragon Age game after 10 long years has been both personally cathartic and surreal, and likely would have been even if I'd not genuinely largely enjoyed myself throughout. To absolutely butcher the Grey Warden motto in service to my point, if this was all a war for our collective time and money, Dragon Age The Veil Guard feels like a victory. Will you be playing Dragon Age The Veil Guard? If so, what are you most excited for? Are you a newcomer or a returning fan? Let us know in the comments and stick with GamesRadar for the latest reviews, news and more.